Welcome to Gems of Motherhood. I'm your host, Sharon Khan. I'm here to connect you with some amazing gems of mothers from all walks of life. Each week, you'll hear interviews as well as resources and actionable tips that you can implement in your daily life to be the best gem God has called you to be. Thanks for walking this journey with me today, and don't forget to subscribe to the show. Now, let's get into episode 10 with Missy Robertson. You know, when our daughter was born with the cleft lip and palate, mm-hmm. it was devastating because we were expecting a perfectly fine, healthy baby, right? But these problems were there right in front of us. And so we were kind of struck in the face with a whole new world of identity Mm -hmm. because who is she going to be? What is she going to do? What problems is she going to have? And how is she going to be able to overcome? And the answer was still the same. Today, we're going to talk about strength and identity with Missy. There's so much that we're going to talk about with her in regards to the subject and how crucial it is, especially in today's world. Missy is a devoted mother of three children. She married Jace Robertson at age 19 and contributed heavily to the Robertson's family business, Duck Commander, for many years. Missy and her husband co-founded the Mia Mu Fund, a fund dedicated to raising awareness and to giving financial assistance to domestic children with their treatments associated with cleft lip and palate. She authored a book called Bless, Bless, Bless and also co-authored The Women of the Commander. She also co-authored a fictional series with her daughter, Mia, entitled Princess in Camo. Welcome to the Gems of Motherhood podcast, Missy. Thank you for having me. It's so great to have you on the show. I really appreciate it. Now, Missy, it is such a necessary topic for us to talk about today. Strength and identity. Now, in today's world, it seems like it's just so wild and carefree, and there are so many things we can explore in this topic. So you've learned to live a life in the spotlight as you played an important role in your family's record-breaking reality television series, Duck Dynasty, from 2012 to 2017. I guess my question for you is, when you first became a first-time mom, what was your understanding on the subject of strength and identity, and did that show affected you in any ways? <laughs> uh, yes, the show affected us in a lot of ways, but um, to your first question about when I was a new mother, so mm-hmm. I've been a mother, Rita's 25, so I've been a mother for 25 years, and um, I was actually just a little younger than Reed is now when I became a mother. Oh, it's kind of scary to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's what happens, right? You're, you pass down, hopefully, all of the good things that you learned as a parent and mm-hmm. even just as an individual. And hopefully, and I've told Reed and my other children this too, hopefully I've taken all of the good things that I got from my parents. And what Jace, when Jace calls spit out the bones, spit out the bones, and keep all of the good things and that I used and then added more good things to them. And I want the same thing for my children. And mm-hmm. so, and I've told them that many times that, you know, when they become parents, I want them to be better parents right. than we were and spit out the bones and, and don't be afraid of that because um, we, we want what's best for our kids. And if that means they're better at us at something and right. it's parenting all the more for it. But the identity part when I was 24 and having my first baby, I'm not sure I gave that much thought mm-hmm. really about, you know, who am I? I was so young, but I did have a very stable childhood in terms of I was taught all of the, like the old Bible stories in the Old mm. Testament. And I got to see every week and, and, and nightly we did little devotionals in my house and, and which I also did with my children growing up. Mm -hmm. that I got to learn and look and see how did God use all of these different people. Some of them were quite the characters that we get to talk about in the Old Testament. And they were not all very good people. And he used those people and their flaws. And we got to learn from their mistakes Mm -hmm. that uh, when they chose to follow God, he blessed them. And when they chose not to, then, you know, they were doomed basically because of their own own actions. So being a first time mom, I started very young um, putting those stories into my children's lives. And I even remember when Reed was really young and he learned to be vocal very, very early. Yeah. <laughs> and 
would recite some of these stories to me before. I mean, right when he was about 14, 15 months old, he had a whole oh, wow. book of, of um, Daniel and the Lion's Den. He had the entire thing memorized. And it was amazing to me. So I knew early on that we've got to start instilling the things that will matter. Those mm-hmm. things will matter forever into eternity. And for those to be the first things that they learn and grab hold on, of how what God did and how he used people to me as a young mom. Mm. That's excellent. Um, I know many times when I read the Bible to my daughter and I'm like, okay, this person doesn't sound very good. How can I explain it properly to her that, you know, there are bad people and we shouldn't be doing things that they're doing? And so there are so many ways that we have to kind of get creative to try to explain to them that not all of the people in the Bible are good. And yet they're perfect examples, you know, that God has, you know, used to show us. No, right. Actually, no one is good. Right. That's what's so great about God and why he sent Jesus is because we're nothing without him. And so, you know, thinking about Amen. this topic and this subject, um, I was, we've actually been studying a little bit about this. Jace has, and, and he has his own podcast that he does, and he's been talking about our, us being, we're royalty mm. because of what God has done for us. And if we choose to become part of his family by accepting him as our Lord and Savior, we're in. We have royalty, right. which means we have access to everything. And Amen. to understand that it's really not about us. It's not about what we can do or who we are, our bloodline, or where we fit in with society. Mm-hmm. None of that matters. Mm-hmm. It's all about him in us. And that's, that's where the strength in identity mm-hmm. comes from. Right. I completely agree. But you know what? Children are also getting so many mixed messages and learning things that are not biblically correct, especially in the school system, or I guess you would say in the public school system. How can we teach our children about having strength in their identity? You know, obviously at home, we try to read the Bible to them. We try to model to them as Christian parents and what we should do and we shouldn't do. Are there any other things that you think Um, would help us to kind of create that kind of confidence in our children to have that identity that they know that they can be confident. This is who God has created for me to be. Well, sadly, um, and I won't say all of it is sad, but it's a lot of responsibility as a parent to raise a Mm -hmm. child. Right. And by the time we have it figured out, the kids are moved out. (laughs) 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 I sometimes wonder, why did God give us as babies babies to raise right. and you know, that it makes the grandparents all the more wiser right um <laughs> yeah and I, I've wondered that many times like I learn I have so much more knowledge now that my kids are almost grown mm-hmm. than I did at 24 years old and 25 having those babies and you know if I knew then what I knew now that, yeah. that old thing but um I would say the number one thing to be able to give your children confidence and strength in their own identity would be to be authentic around mm. them. We see, I've learned so much um, that so many people are not that way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that also that saying that you never know what's going on behind closed doors. And that is right. very, very true. But your kids, no. No matter what you say in public, they see you how, how you interact with people in social gatherings, at church, in restaurants, at your work. Mm-hmm. And you can... If you ask them, which would be a very scary question for a lot of people, how do I fit in? Do I, do I mirror what is happening outside our house in those social gatherings? Do I mirror that with you guys in our home? And most of the time, your kids are going to say, depends on what age they are. Mm-hmm. They're probably going to say, no, because we're a lot more comfortable in our house. We kind of snap at those around us the most, or we get annoyed at the ones around us the most, and that's our family. Right. But to be out authentic and to say, I'm sorry for that. I shouldn't have done that. Those are hard things. And those are statements that I think parents take for granted that our kids need to hear. Mm -hmm. They need to say, my bad. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry for being short with you. I'm sorry I haven't had the time that you've expected of me lately. I'm sorry that my work has taken more priority this week than last week. And and I want to do better. But we sometimes feel like, and I know I did when my kids were little, was, well, I don't need to show them my flaws Mm -hmm. because I need to be 
you know, secure and confident for their security. Mm-hmm. But when they see the difference in the way that we act with him, with them versus the way that we act with other people, you can't fool kids. Right. So it also, it makes them look like, why am I not as important as the person that they see once a week in the church building? Why, why are they not treating me as well as they're treating those people? Maybe not consciously, but subconsciously mm-hmm. they are. And they question themselves. What did I do wrong? Mm-hmm. What's wrong with me? Why am I not good enough to get the good parts of my mom and the good parts of my dad? So I, if I could go back when, when my kids were little, I would apologize more. <laughs> <laughs> and I've apologized a lot more as an adult with them, you know, as they are, have become adults. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I should have. If I could go back, I would have changed certain things. And that means a lot to them now that than even, you know, before. Right. So it's not too late. I'll say that. It's not yeah. too late to say, I would have done this if I would have known more, or I could have, or I should have, and I'm sorry. Mm. Those are really great advice. I mean, just being authentic and apologizing when we're wrong. I mean, how else do you think we can help our children to develop a distinct personality? Oh, goodness. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure you can. (laughs) I think, uh, I have, okay, so I have three children, but I also have a fourth child who we, who came to us from Nicaragua a couple of years ago. Okay. She was eight. So we've had her for two years. So mm-hmm. I would say all four of our children have completely different personalities. And so number one, I would say do not, do not compare mm-hmm. your kids in front of mm-hmm. the other one. Never do that. Um, but, you know, I've got rambunctious. I've got ones who jump before they think. I have one who completely thinks through every single aspect risk the overthinker for, for months before make, making a decision, which drives me crazy. You know, so <laughs> I think I'm not sure you can change those aspects of a personality as much as a mom wants to do that. Just, yeah. You know, we want to, we want to change their behavior, but we can't, I'm not sure you can change a personality. <laughs> I would not even say you, a mother should take that on. That's just yeah. too big of a responsibility. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, all right. Well, you know, with all of your kids, they're pretty grown up and they all have, each have a very, um, you know, different personality. As a mom, how would you help them to embrace their identity and how would you help help them to embrace your personality? You know, like you said, you have one who's really analytical, who's an overthinker, and the other one who's just like adventurous. I'm just going for it. You know, God is with me, right. and and whatnot. Right. How how do you um, spend that time with each of them individually to help them embrace that identity? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm trying, I'm, I'm thinking back, my mind is flooded with all of the different things that I tried to do to kind of curb yeah. some of those different things, you know, in their personalities. But, um, you know, with, with the one that jumps before they think, they, a lot of times, and I learned this, they had to learn it the hard way. Mm-hmm. Because when I would tell them or try to give them advice, and even, my, even Jace, my husband, would try to tell them, give them advice, sometimes they would take it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they wouldn't just, you know, very like, that's not going to work. That's never going to happen. It's my way. You know, I just know, I just know because I'm the ripe old age of tween, teen, whatever it was. Right. And if it's not that detrimental, I throw my hands up and say, okay, go ahead. They have to learn from their mistakes. Yeah. And as they've gotten older, I can see in their personality yeah. that, that's working like sometimes letting them fall the one that's very analytical um (laughs) i would ask them questions and say i I need i need an answer and i would sometimes have to give them a deadline (laughs) i need an answer before this date and don't come to me and say three the three words and they would know those three words and they were i don't know when i ask Mm -hmm. a question i do not want to hear i don't know you have to make a decision yeah and so you know trying to really pull them out of their comfort zone. And, and someone told me, well, maybe it's just because he's so unsure of himself or herself, or I'm like, this kid is the most sure kid I've ever seen. So it wasn't that it's just a personality trait. 
Mm -hmm. Um, They want to make sure they get it right. So uh, I think it's just trying to, you know, spending a lot of time with your child and letting them know that it's okay to make make mistakes and mess up. And we'll be there for them when they do. Mm. So that's the best advice I've got. (laughs) (laughs) Well, what if your child has a friend who may not necessarily um, be walking in the right identity that God has called that person to be? How would you address that situation with your child as well as the other person? Yeah, um, we've actually had some instances with that with right. uh, with our daughter, and so um, you know she changed schools recently, and kind of got in with um, some some girls that just weren't living right, just mm-hmm. weren't weren't making the right decisions. And when we found out, of course, we had a talk with her about it, but we also invited those girls to come over with their moms. And actually, we, we invited them, but if they didn't come, they would have no relationship with our daughter anymore. Mm. But we would give them a chance to come and hear why. And we wanted to share our faith with them. And there were eight girls that received that invitation, mm. and six came with their parents and okay. were able to hear you know, it was, a, it was a way to share our faith, but it was also a way for our daughter to see how important we are taking this right about the ones that she is surrounded with that we're not taking this lightly and we're not saying oh when you grow up you'll understand or what my parents would would t- tell us like time to sow your wild oats i think that's kind of an older saying but you get what i'm what i'm talking about that it's okay mm-hmm. to make bad choices right now because you're young and it's expected of you but that's not what oh, god yes. has called us to do or be and so we took it very seriously. We did it in front of her. We were open about it. We were authentic about it. And we shared our faith in front of her with these girls and with their parents so that there's no confusion mm-hmm. about what we believe and who we believe in and what we expect of our daughter and her behavior in our home and her friend's behavior in our home. And at the same time, we also made a rule that um, if you were here, you had to turn in your cell phone. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a central place in our home where plug it in there. You have access access to it whenever you want, but you just can't go off somewhere with it. It has to be right there for for everyone to see. Again, authenticity. Right. We want to know what everybody's doing at all times. No one's hiding anything. Um, The cell phones are pretty detrimental to our children and can be to adults, but... Our children don't know how to handle it. Their brains aren't even fully formed yet. Yeah. And we hand this loaded weapon to them and say, have fun. Yep. I love it. It's a big demise, I think, for our culture and especially each individual child. I completely agree. I mean, I love the, uh, I love what you said about, you know, inviting the child and the parent into the home and it just opens the door for you to share your faith. That's just so beautiful. And obviously handing in the cell phone. It's so totally needed because if they're coming in to hang out with your daughter, then there should be real communication. There should be real fellowship and, you know, real time with each other rather than, you know, yeah, I'm talking and I'm on my phone. You know, that's really not building relationship. Exactly. Yes. I guess my other question would be, what are some actionable tips would you suggest for moms to teach children to love themselves, to accept themselves as who God has created for them to be. I mean, you know, with you inviting the parent and the child into the home, you know, for for those children that you said that they were not necessarily living the right way, how would you encourage that? I mean, obviously sharing the gospel is great, is beautiful. I guess the second question to that would be, what if these girls continue living a life that was not well, and yet they're still friends with your daughter, what would you do? Um, I think I would tell, I'm trying to think, you know, this is, this is something that I've hopefully instilled in my children, but I have not had the conversation with them about who you are, your identity, because, um, and everything that we've tried to do in our home over the last almost 30 years, Jason and I, is understand that 
it's because of Jesus is why we're here Mm -hmm. and it's not because of us. And so, um, you know, when our daughter was born with a cleft lip and palate, Mm -hmm. it was devastating because we were expecting a perfectly fine, healthy baby. Right. But these problems were there right in front of us. And so we were kind of struck in the face with a whole new world of identity Mm -hmm. because who is she going to be? What is she going to do? What problems is she going to have? And how is she going to be able to overcome? And the answer was still the same. It's through Christ. Mm -hmm. The answer never changed. So we realized we had to now actually put it into words for people because then, then the fame came with Duck Dynasty and we were asked to kind of relate the story to people. So we had to put this into words and, we, you know, started just talking about it and with her and with other people. And like, we've learned that it's not about us. Mm -hmm. This life is not about us. We were not put here on this earth to be happy. (laughs) Yeah. Shocker. You know, so many people are searching for that. Well, I'm just not happy. So I'm going to leave my husband. I'm not, I'm just not happy. So I'm going to leave my job. I'm just not happy, happy, happy. It doesn't matter. Mm Mm-hmm. Joy is very different from, from happiness and you can find joy in everything. If you are walking God's will and in his path. And I thought about this, if you don't mind, I want to read a couple of scriptures in Galatians. Galatians 2 20 is I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, Mm. but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. If we no longer live, if we're crucified with Christ, we no longer live. There is no Missy. Right. Uh, it's Jesus. And that's it. And I'm hoping that I have instilled that in Jace also on a daily basis that, you know, I messed up. Mm-hmm. Often saying I'm sorry, but understanding that I'm trying to do everything I can to point my children to the creator of the universe who loves them more than anything in this entire world, more than I will ever be able to understand because as much as I love them, he loves them so much more. And that's, you know, for a mom, that's just kind of like, when you really think about that, it's just like, well, what, what harm really can be done? Right. Will they suffer? Yes. Will they make bad decisions? Yes. But if I try my best to give them the understanding that they are a child of the one true king of kings there's nothing that can remove them from his love and Mm -hmm. his love is so much greater than mine and i know what i'm going to do for my kid all the time i'm going to do my best for for them every single time so the identity comes from understanding that you are nothing Mm -hmm. but he is everything and that means it all amen Well, I would love it if you could share some practical tips as well. Even for some mothers, sometimes I feel like we can lose the sense of identity. There are moms who feel like they could do more than just being home and taking Mm -hmm. care of their children. There are moms who feel like I'm okay, you know, I'm content just being a homemaker. How would you encourage moms who are going through that and trying to search for an identity of just wanting to really know they're not just a mom, but they're also a woman. They're also a wife. They're whoever that God created for them to be. Yeah, it goes back to being called to be who you are, being created. You're a child of, of the king. Mm-hmm. Being a wife is not who you are. It's kind of what you do. Amen. Being a mom is not who you are. It's what you do. Who you are is a created, purposeful being created by God and, cre- and loved by Jesus. It doesn't matter what we're here on earth to do, because if we are saying as women that our our identity comes from being a mom, there's a lot of women out there who can't be moms Mm -hmm. uh, or who have chosen not to be a mother because of things that they've gone through with their own parents. Mm -hmm. And I worked with women who were recovering drug addicts coming out of um, sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. I worked with them for three years. I hired 51 women in three years for my jewelry business. And I will say that 50, hear me when I say 50 out of 51 had toxic mothers. Mm. That can't be a coincidence. Mm. And 
those those relationships were the mom having her own issues and putting them before their children right and basically ruining their children until those girls and those women who were mostly mothers as well had to figure out who am I so if their identity is motherhood they had a terrible teacher Mm. and now they're trying to figure that out like why can't I be a better mother that's not the right question to ask the right question is how can I be glorifying God in whatever I do and if they understand that they were chosen to be his child they were bought at a Mm. price a very a deadly price and they're that important to the creator then they understand that their worth it doesn't matter what they do they're always striving to be better because they want to glorify him because of the price that he paid for them and the gratitude they have for him saving them and that's what you know that's what i want to instill in myself even every day as i'm still growing but you know our children having that consistency of understanding this life is not about you exceeding and getting happiness Mm -hmm. that's not it it's not about the perfect career it's not about finding the perfect boyfriend or girlfriend. It's not about finding the perfect job. It's about finding God, seeking mm-hmm. him and finding him. Then whatever else he brings you, it's just icing. So good. So good. That was awesome. Well, Missy, you know, before we get to the end of the show, is there anything else you would like to share with other gems of mothers out there? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I wish I had a lot more time, but, um, you know, Jace tells me all the time, just, just enjoy the process. And sometimes Mm. I get caught up in my schedule and the list and checking them off and getting them done and the end result and kind of going to bed with a, Oh, it's finished. Right. And then I forget, I I could have like enjoyed that a lot more today. All those different things I did, you know, I need to do that more and that's um, kind of sitting relaxing and one-on-one with the kids or FaceTiming my kids who don't live around me anymore doing more of that instead of planning what's happening next and Mm -hmm. again that goes back to those personality traits (laughs) (laughs) not only can you work on your own kids and direct their personalities but you're still directing yours as well but I would just say have fun because children are a gift Mm-hmm. And they're only in your home for so long. So try to relax more and have a good time with them. I love that. Well, Missy, you know, I really do enjoy when you said um, enjoy the process. It's so true. Sometimes we get into doing the things that are so mundane and the day-to-day, you know, I got to clean the clothes. I've got to wipe the counter. I've got to cook, you know, um, yeah. and we forget to enjoy the process. Cause I've had days yeah. where I'm like sitting down, I have a two and a half year old and I've had days where I sit down with my two and a half year old and I'm like, Oh, this is going really smoothly. I'm really enjoying the process. <laughs> and at the end of the day, I'm like, huh, how did this happen? It's so good. And there are those yeah. days where you just forget all about it and it's thrown out the door and you're like, okay, we have to do this next. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, why is this day so structured? And I did not enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. I will say that some advice that was given to me when I was very early in my, in my parenting was whenever you like tell your children what you expect of them. So when you go into the grocery store, you're going to Walmart and it's just, mm-hmm. there's just stuff everywhere and they're going to want everything they see before you go in, tell them, this is what I expect of you with your behavior. If you do what is expected of you, then at the checkout aisle, you get to pick out a piece of candy or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And so when I would do that, my, my boys, because I had my boys first a long time before I had Mia, they did so much better, like sitting in the buggy or holding my hand. I mean, it was almost shocking because they were looking for that one little prize at the end. Yeah. But those hectic days when I would forget to tell them again, take that 30 seconds and tell them what I expect halfway through the grocery store. I'm like, why are they being so bad? Like what is wrong with them? They have too much sugar today or whatever it is. And I realized I didn't tell them what I expected of them. Mm. So that's on me. And the same thing goes back with us. If we start our day with, even if it's just 60 seconds 
between the alarm going off and you getting out of bed. Every 60 second increment in the morning counted. And, but when I did do that, I felt a lot more calm, calmness for the day. I felt a lot more prepared and just listening to what God had in store for me and wanting to please him mm. with, with those decisions that I was wanting to be making and how I was going to be acting that day. So the same principle applies with us even today. But I encourage moms to start with themselves and then pass that on to their children when they're little. It goes a lot more peaceful, those grocery store trips. <laughs> <laughs> That's really a great tip. I think that a lot of times when we try to place a certain kind of expectations to our kids and tell them ahead of time, they sort of like take it in and like, okay, this is what mom said. And mm -hmm. this is how it's going to work. And I think it does work. You're right. Well, Missy, we're pretty much at the end of the show. I really appreciate you coming on to the Gems of Motherhood sure. podcast. Yeah. Thank so you for having Absolutely. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gems of Motherhood podcast. If you're wanting to connect with more amazing Gems of Mothers and more resources, head over to gemsofmotherhood.com where you can subscribe to the show. That's where you'll find show notes with actionable tips and any links mentioned by our guests. Most importantly, I hope you'll find inspiration and learn to cultivate your own journey. You are loved. You're an incredible gem to God. He knows you intimately. He knows what you need. He knows what you're going through. Remember, you are fearfully and wonderfully made in Him. Be sure to tune in to next week for our next episode.